February 12, 2020. Wednesday of the fifth week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Queen of Sheba, having heard of Solomon's fame, came to test him with subtle questions. She arrived in Jerusalem with a very numerous retinue and with camels bearing spices, a large amount of gold, and precious stones. She came to Solomon and questioned him on every subject in which she was interested. King Solomon explained everything she asked about, and there remained nothing hidden from him that he could not explain to her. When the Queen of Sheba witnessed Solomon's great wisdom, the palace he had built, the food at his table, the seating of his ministers, the attendance and garb of his waiters, his banquet service, and the burnt offerings he offered in the temple of the Lord, she was breathless. The report I heard in my country about your deeds and your wisdom is true, she told the king, though I did not believe the report until I came and saw with my own eyes. I have discovered that they were not telling me the half. Your wisdom and prosperity surpass the report I heard. Blessed are your men, blessed these servants of yours, who stand before you always and listen to your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord, your God, whom it has pleased to place you on the throne of Israel. In his enduring love for Israel, the Lord has made you king to carry out judgment and justice. Then she gave the king 120 gold talents, a very large quantity of spices and precious stones. Never again did anyone bring such an abundance of spices as the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. The Word of the Lord. The Responsorial Psalm. The response is, the mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light. Bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The mouth of the just man tells of wisdom, and his tongue utters what is right. The law of his God is in his heart, and his steps do not falter. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is the refuge in time of distress. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. The mouth of the just murmurs wisdom. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. When he got home away from the crowd, his disciples questioned him about the parable. He said to them, Are even you likewise without understanding? Do you not realize that everything that goes into a person from outside cannot defile, since it enters not the heart but the stomach and passes out into the latrine? Thus he declared all foods clean. But what comes out of a man, that is what defiles him. From within the man, from his heart, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. This is Catholic Daily Reflections for Wednesday of the fifth week in Ordinary Time. Today's reflection is entitled, Why do we do what we do? Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. Conversely speaking, that which comes from within is what makes a person holy. Often we are more concerned about that which is on the outside than that which is on the inside. We often worry excessively about 
how we are perceived by others, how we look, or what our reputation is in the eyes of the world. This gospel specifically addresses the charge of the Pharisees that eating certain foods defiles someone. Jesus isn't buying that. He is pointing our attention to our hearts. What is there in our hearts? And what is it that comes forth from our hearts? This is what makes us who we are. Though this deals with the worries that certain foods will defile, it also deals with much more. It addresses the tendency of purely external observances of God's law. Thus, it addresses the tendency of the Pharisees to be excessively worried about how they are perceived by others. Their external observance of the law reveals the fact that they seem to be overly concerned about what others think about them and what others say about them. They want to look holy. They want to look like they are beyond the smallest of indiscretions. But it's all an appearance and not reality. For that reason, Jesus puts the attention on the internal. God sees what is in our hearts. Even if no one else sees this, we should never forget the fact that God sees all. That's all that matters. That which is in our hearts can either do great damage to us or do great good. There are those who, in the public perception, are way off base. But from God's perspective, they are right on target. Conversely, there are those in the public opinion who are shining stars, but from God's perspective are way off base. There is only one thing that matters. What does God think? Reflect today upon that which is inside your heart. This introspection should also challenge you to look at your motivations. Why do you do what you do and why do you make the decisions you make? Are they choices that come from an honest and sincere heart? Or are they choices that are based more on how you will be perceived? Hopefully your motives are pure, and hopefully those pure motives come from a heart that is deeply united to the heart of Christ. Let us pray. Lord, please make my motives pure. Help me to live only out of a pure heart. Help me to always realize that holiness is found only in serving you and not in serving my public image. I love you, my Lord. Jesus, I trust in you.